All right, it is time for the Currently Reading Challenge weekly wrap-up for week number one. Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you this video. This is going to be my first wrap-up to see how the first week of the Currently Reading Challenge went. Um, what the Currently Reading Challenge is, is sometimes I dedicate time specifically to the books on my Currently Reading. I put them, all the titles, in jars. I have one for fiction, one for non-fiction. I pick three fiction and two non fiction titles and that creates my TBR for the week. With this round of the challenge I'm aiming for 1,000 pages over the four weeks broken down to 250 pages a week or 50 pages a day for a five-day reading week. So that is the goal. 250 is the goal and then every day I try and get to 50 pages or for five days I try and get to 50 pages. But we're going to look at things actually title by title and see how things went and then we'll see did I make it to 250 pages. So here we go. We're going to start with the least pages read to the most most pages read title by title. Coming in at a number I think that has never come in before, which is zero pages read, is We Were Dreamers, um, an immigrant superhero origin story by Simu Liu. This is zero pages read because I switched to audio. Um, so when I got this last year, uh, I didn't have access to the audio, but I did start to read the book. And then now I do have access to the audio and I've started to read it or started to listen to it. So I've listened to one hour and 50 three minutes so and um I almost got to where I had read so I got to chapter seven Zenning's homecoming uh, which is page 71 and when I was reading reading the book with my eyeballs I got to page 74 so I am just almost at where I was. So no page progress on this one and I have six hours and 17 minutes left for listening. For me, one hour and 53 minutes of audio in a week is extraordinary. I read about one audiobook like every, it takes me about six months to read an audiobook. I don't have a lot of audiobook listening time um, or it's a habit I have yet to cultivate. So this week I really did look for opportunities um, for when was good for me to listen to audio. I also found some stumbling blocks at things that felt like they were good audio activities, like pairing um, for like like house tours and stuff like that. And I was like, some things really, really weren't. Um, so I realized like doing um, anything where I had to, if I was multitasking for things that I've done a million times, that was fine. Or, you know, maybe not a million times, but like regularly that was fine. But if I was doing something that required like decisions or planning, um, then that didn't work. Like I had to like note that that was getting low and do I want to do this and blah, blah, blah. Mm, that didn't work. So um, anyway, so I am working my way through what are good audio um, pairing uh, activities um, and some obvious one works uh, obvious ones worked and some obvious ones didn't so working on that anyway in terms of the book oh my goodness I am loving it it is narrated by Simu Leo um, he was uh, on Kim's Convenience which is a Canadian comedy he was also of course in Shang-Chi um, and uh, I'm really enjoying this it really cemented what I had already read um so but I am curious and a little cautious about how well I will receive the audio for when we're getting to the point where I haven't already read it so um I'm not sure I'm not there yet um so uh but I am really enjoying it it's a great audiobook he's a great narrator so much character so much like, I, it's weird because, like, all the characters were, like, pretty flushed out from, like, characters. All his family members are pretty flushed out from reading it. But when I listen to it, I pick up certain things. And I'm like, oh, okay, that makes a little more sense. Or, oh, like, you know. But it's very, if you haven't read it, it's very conversational. Um, very, I, I, I love, it. the part I'm still at is, is mostly about his parents um, and, um, them coming to Canada from China and I'm loving it so very much. So I'm really at like on like zero pages on, as I said, never happened before. And I don't count audio as pages. Um, I count it as a book read once I've completed reading it, but I never count audio as pages. 
audio is like, especially because all of the, and I'm not, everyone has their own system, and I'm, if that's how people do it for theirs, that's fine. For me, when I'm p counting pages, I'm counting ebook or um, physical pages. It's just what works for me. I listen to so few audios that I don't have a very good system, and all of the apps and devices sort of have the information differently. <laughs> In terms of some don't have, how, usually it says how much is left, but maybe not. Sometimes you only know how long the chapter you're listening to is. So anyway, because I don't listen to it a lot, I don't have a firm system other than once the book is complete, I mark it as complete and how many hours I read. And I do know how many pages it is, but I don't count it for pages because I listen to it. But again, I, don't, I listen to so few audios that I don't have a, as robust a system <laughs> as I do for physical books. So let's get to something where I actually read some pages. Coming in at 57 pages read, and honestly that is a lot for this one, is The Vikings by Gwyn Jones. This is a non-fiction history book about Vikings. I made significant progress. I think this came up last year and I usually read more like 15 to 20 pages. I did unfortunately leave right in the middle of a chapter. It is a very slow read because a lot of the pages are like that. There are some photos and some maps and plates and stuff, but, yet, but to be honest, the majority of it is this, and sometimes the notes can be like half the page, so it is a very dry read, and as I mentioned before, it's a very hefty read. I did find out that it is available through the Internet Archive, um, and they have scanned copies that you can borrow from their library, and I think on some days I might switch to that because um, it is a hefty one, so if I'm more tired, um, I think it's better to read it digitally. Also, some of the digital editions that they have, or the scanned editions that they have, have different um, complementary, supplementary works, more maps, um, uh, drawings, um, and uh, photos of sites and stuff like that so it had more context where this is just text and I gotta say I was surprised to pick up on this one I felt like the author has a bit he's a bit in for for Snorri who <laughs> or who's accredited with the Prosetta and he was he's pretty harsh on him and I was surprised to feel that opinion through a non-fiction history work I'm gonna have to ask my brother about that one given he is a historian um uh, if that's a common thing because I just I was a little surprised to feel uh how strongly that perspective and then it also made me think well how do you know that what he said wasn't true and I do that well that's a conversation for another day but I do feel that's one of the resistances I have to reading histories I'm like how do you know that and I know there's like a bucket load of uh, footnotes and um, like references but when you're reading it sometimes there's moments where like that kind of moment where you're feeling like I don't feel like I'm getting enough of the story which makes me feel like you're not speaking to me you're speaking to people who know more than me and have that context and now I don't feel like I'm the reader yet here I am reading and so I never like that feeling whether it's reading or watching um and like so yeah so I had a little like hey <laughs> like one mean and two What's, what's the context here? Tell me more. So anyway, um, so anyway, so but still, 57 pages read from that. I have 264 pages left, which is great. Once I get under 300 pages, I feel much more comfortable. I'm trying to read works that are only 300 pages or less, uh, or the majority of works that are only 300 pages or less. So this is this was an outsider because it's um, uh, 440 pages. There are a lot of supplementary notes at the end <laughs> so but still um uh, I actually don't know I don't, it's not is it 400 to the end of the text I have now I have to check sorry uh no it's 400 oh it's 400 just to the end of the to the ap end of the appendices which are full paragraph stuff once it gets into this stuff I stop counting the pages but when it's still full paragraph stuff I will read I'll read the, the appendices. I'll read the appendices. Okay, so still a lot to go there, but lots of progress. Okay, coming in at 59 pages, so just two pages more, we have The Highlander's Dark Seduction by Joanne Rock. Um, so this is a historical uh, romance that also has some paranormal fade-ish elements to it. So fade might, well, I think it is fade. Um, and so 59 pages read and 
zero pages left. Yay! So I actually finished this. I'm very excited about that. This was my first finish. I fin actually finished it on the first day. Um, it also is, it's a novella and I had read, you know, about a third of it or a third of it or so and um, I just hadn't come back to it. So anyway, so I came back to it. I really enjoyed it. Um, there was, this is about a woman, it's the second in a two, two part series. It's about a woman who goes to visit her friend in Scotland who sort of, she, she moved out there and then she didn't hear from her too much. Um, and then, um, she sort of, it's, you know, it's a second in a novella of a romance series. So it sort of follows the same pattern as the first one. And this one has a sort of, there's some brothers that are sort of cursed, um, and they have sort of been pulled away, um, to the fey world, um, and they sometimes can cross over, but not always. So think sort of like, you know, Lady Hawk Brigadoon, kind of that kind of vibe. Um, and um, there is a third brother, but there wasn't a third book. So this was um, a fun read. I enjoyed it. Um, and uh, I finished a series. So I finished a book and I finished a series. I finished a novella and I finished a series. So I'm very excited about that. 59 pages. Yay! Um, I also read 59 pages from... The Demon Soul by Richard A. Knack. This is the second in the War of the Ancients trilogy that's part of the war, this uh, Warcraft series. And um, so it's a fantasy series and I really enjoyed it. And I have zero pages left. As it turns out, these both had 59 pages left and I finished them. Yay! Um, this one I tried not to finish as fast because then I would have to read more <laughs> Vikings. <laughs> so I did sort of parse this one out a little bit more. I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm really, this is the second Warcraft series that I'm reading. Um, and this one, I, I will say like, it, it does have a lot of sort of elements that you have in the second of a fantasy trilogy thing, but I like the characters. I, I am curious as to where it's going, um, especially because of how, how some people perceive some of the characters, because the characters are part of the game as well. Um, so, and so I'm kind of like, really? <laughs> like, I'm kind of like, <laughs> I'm like, I wonder what happens to make that be who people respond this way about. So anyway, I enjoyed it. And I have to say, I think I showed a lot of restraint because I did not pick up the third book, The Sundering, but I really want to pick up the third book, but I'm going to try and leave it till June. We'll see. I don't know. But yeah, this was um, a lot of fun and um, I'm enjoying them and I am playing World of Warcraft. So that definitely sort of adds to that. Okay, so that's another 59 pages read. And then I read for the fifth title, I read 136 pages of a Wicked Game by Kate Bateman, part of the Ruthless Rivals series. This is a historical romance, if you cannot tell from the cover. Um, and this involves two um, people who are from rival families and they really like bugging each other. And um, it is more of a rivalry as opposed to a sort of hate situation. Um, and uh, yeah, and it's to set after or during slash after the Napoleonic War. And um, and yeah, and it's about a, a sort of gear, a dare. There's sort of a dare situation going on and they sort of are very playful back and forth um, about this, these, this dare. And they've done this before. They dare each other a, a fair amount, apparently, historically. Um, so this one I actually quite enjoyed. I still have 76 pages left, so I didn't finish it, but I did read a lot of it. 136 pages from any book is a significant number for me. This one does have a lot of chapter breaks, and I will say I did benefit from that because a lot of times the chapters would end with like a lot of space left on the page. Okay, now I can't find an example of that. I'm sure everyone knows what that looks like, right? Like this. So I, you know, I read a quarter of a page or a fifth of a page and got to count to the whole page. So I definitely benefited from that this this week. This was also a much faster read. The two romances were were fast reads and everything else was slow. <laughs> even even the demon soul that my page uh, my pace on that is about 50 pages an hour and the viking book is about 25 pages an hour. So you know, and this one was closer to sort of 70, 85. So I didn't have any 60, which is my normal sort of pace. I had a slower and faster. <laughs> Some weeks are like that. Anyway, so I actually quite enjoyed this. I enjoyed it more than I expected. I do feel like 
because I think at the beginning I felt like he wasn't listening to her very well. Um, and But I do feel like it kind of has this sort of like he comes in and fixes everything in her life sort of vibe for a little bit in the middle there. And I was not a fan of that. Um, but... Um, uh, but that, it just, it was really concentrated at one moment, and that's not really the point, really. So, anyway, I am, I am enjoying this. I'm curious to see where it goes. Um, I, you know, at 76 pages, that puts me in really good shape for it being able to finish it. That's definitely sort of more of a page count I can read in a week. So, if it comes up later, that's great. Um, and if it doesn't come up during the rest of the month, it puts me in good shape to finish it later on in June or when, whenever. <laughs> so overall, I'm very, very happy. I have to say it's very surprising to have all, almost all physical books uh, this week. I read so much digitally now that I did not anticipate to have so many physical reads. Um, but um, it's, it's what happened. The jars tell me what to do. <laughs> the jars have their say. Um, and yeah, and so if you did the math at home, that comes to a total of 311 pages overall. I am so happy. I was a little worried about making my page count, mostly because two of the titles, I only had 59 pages and I wasn't counting anything from We Were Dreamers. So a lot of the days I really was reading a lot of A Wicked Game and again, a fair amount from The Vikings. I read sort of 15, like 12 to 15 pages a day for that one. And that is well more. Usually when I, other times I've read it, I've read more like four pages. But I do think it's important to give myself, in, instead of giving myself more time for the faster reads to get more pages, in the long run, it's actually pretty good to give myself a fair amount of time to the slower reads because they take longer, <laughs> you know? So, but I did sort of time it out a little bit because I was trying, I was also trying to aim for can I make this page count in with one hour of reading a day? So we're going to take a look at that too. So, but yeah, 311 pages. I smashed my 250 page uh, goal. Um, so I buy 61 pages. So yay. But we are going to reset the counter with the new TBR that starts to, um, with, uh, this goes up on Monday. So my TBR will already be posted and I'm going to start again at zero and see if I can do 50 pages again. I will have a cumulative total because but but I still aim for 250 pages a week so let's take a look at how the week went so oops whoa lots of pages so here we go so for day one 102 pages I did as I said mentioned uh, her the Highlander's Dark Seduction on the first page the asterisk means I finished a page so and then I hit 61 pages 51 pages 50 pages with another finish of Demon Soul and 47 pages. So that last day I didn't meet my daily page count but at that point I was down to only the historical romance and Vikings and I was like I did the best that I can in the time that I had and I knew that I had already hit my page count with three the day before. I had hit 264 so I knew it was kind of all bonus um, and yeah so I think that's a pretty good run for my money. I also did read a little bit from some of the other currently reading titles on the side. I always read after I'd already finished my 50 pages for the day and I do also keep track of on this side all of my other reads. So this, re this week I had some visual works, I was reading some manga and some comics. I also read a kids book and so, oh, I forgot to total that. So, I don't know. I don't know how many pages that is. It looks like, I don't know, 100, 3, 4, five, I don't know, between around 600 pages for, for visual, mostly visual works and kids' books. And then I also decided to keep track of sort of like just, you know, did I get to my goal? Um, did I listen to audio or have an activity? Did I enjoy what I read. I started out with mostly and then ended up with yeses, so that's good. Um, I also did this, unfortunately there's a really dark one, a, a dark line in the middle that makes this look a little bit odd, but I sort of like had sort of like how did it feel like it was going in numbers and sort of started well and was sort of all over. <laughs> and then I did, how many pages did I read in 60 minutes? So I can't read that actually. So 
timed reading for, I did mostly an hour. One day I did 57 minutes. So 57 minutes, 60 pages, 60 minutes, 55 pages, 60 minutes, 47 pages, 60 minutes, 47 pages, 60 minutes, 47 pages. So that was really, um, makes me feel good about my goal of 250 pages. Because if you look at that, you know, I did exceed it and meet it sometimes, but I had three days at 47 pages. So with one hour's worth of reading. Now, sometimes I can read more than an hour, but I feel like I should always be able to get an hour in. Um, so I wanted to have a, what's that called? Realistic goal. It's not always my, my thing. I like to overachieve. So, but generally speaking, I, but I also don't want to be disappointed. I don't want to not meet my goal. So that's what I was aiming for. And that's why I went with the 250 pages a week, because I'm like, if I get an hour's worth of reading five days out of the week, can't like, let's, what's a realistic goal. So I went with that. And then I also just had some, you know, what helped and what hindered. I added a column for, did I fall asleep? Because I realized that's actually been said one of my deterrence or or challenges with getting pages in is if I fall asleep. I only fell asleep one day, but that time I fell asleep three times. <laughs> three times. Oh my god. Always reading Vikings. Which which really made me think to think of alternates and um because reading on my tablet would be much better on a tired day than holding that very big heavy book in my hand. So yeah, so but overall, I am pretty, pretty happy with how things went. Um, I did also get my currently reading from 29 to 26, which is very exciting. So I had the two finishes and then I also finished uh, Yosagi Yohimbo volume 25. So that was very exciting. Um, and yeah, I think things are off to a good start. I am as always curious to see what I am going to pick next. I filmed these before I film my TBR, even though I show my TBR first. So you will know what I have, um, what I am reading this week. I will put it up in the cards and down below. If you have not seen my week two TBR, I wonder if I will get some repeats. I wonder if I will get an opportunity to maybe finish off a week of game. It's not about the finishes, but of course, finishes are good. I love finishes. Um, and uh, yeah, I think this is a good start. 311 pages um, and one hour and 53 minutes of audio for one week is actually, I think, really good amount of reading and I'm making really good progress. So fingers crossed that there is more good progress and progress in the weeks ahead. Um, I am think I think for this month, I am going to stick to just doing my TBRs and my currently reading uh, wrap ups like these weekly wrap ups for my videos. I do have some tags on my radar, but I don't know if I have time to film them. So I think I might just stick to these two for me get back in the spirit and, and rhythm of filming and then I will have um, tags to do in the future. And um, yeah, so there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know how you are doing. Did you have any finishes this week if you were doing the currently reading challenge or if you were doing any reading at all? And do you do timed reading? I found I like doing timed reading. Um, it gives me some nice structure. It lets me know how much time to put aside. So yeah, I would love to know if anyone else um, does that, like sets an hour aside um, or what, how, ever, how much ever time you do. Um, I found it really helpful. I did sometimes, I will admit, I found it sometimes hard to get that time in there and I had to stop doing something else or put something else to the side or do something else later, but I did manage to do it <laughs> five days out of the week. So yay. <laughs> All right. So that is it for this first wrap up for the currently reading challenge May, 2023. And I'm looking forward to seeing where things go. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with another video soon. Take care.